Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Linux Lads. Uh, I'm Shane. I'm Mike. And I'm Connor. Yes, we thought we'd do the recorded bit live, just, you know, for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, yeah, we, we we didn't come here with much of a plan, did we? No. No. no, no, no. Plan, no. <laughs> yeah, we came here with very little uh, planning, so forgive us if we're really shite. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, how was your trip over, guys? Much better than yours, actually. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we went with Aer Lingus and everything. It was pure freaking luxury. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I love coming to the UK. Um, because everyone's like, you got a plane over here? And I'm like, it's probably easier than how you got from another city in the UK. <laughs> um, but yeah, today uh, we're going to talk about, we're, we're kind of throwing the whole format of the podcast out the window a bit, aren't we? And we're just, <laughs> we're just going to talk about um, how much do you it, use yeah. the command line? Yeah, and why Connor is wrong for not using it very often. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm sensing hostility. I don't know what. It's, it's just hostility. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, Mike. Uh, we know, like all three of us know, that you are probably the biggest command line user of all three of us. Um, so yeah, what would you use it for? Like, is the point? Is is what I'm going for? Well, uh, pretty much everything except uh, internet browsing and uh, anything that needs GUI. But everything else is easier and faster to do in the command line. So file operations. Isn't uh, there a command line like? Um, internet browsers just saying yeah they are but have you seen how shy they are <laughs> I, I have that's the reason why I don't use them but they're so cool yeah but most like try watching YouTube in the command line <laughs> yeah but the thing is like w with these like command line tools like it's it's not actual like sometimes it's not actual usefulness or utility is why you're using it. you're just using it because it's like look what I can do on the command line oh, now you're just trolling me though you know <laughs> but <laughs> I'm serious like, uh, yeah, so no, no, so I'm not I, watching videos in ASCII, uh, if that's what you're saying. I, I think That'd be cool. I, I think that actually so, exists. A, yeah, I think somebody released the entire um, like Star Wars or there's something. There's a Star Wars in, episode in, in, in ASCII, yeah. In, in ASCII, yeah. Never finished it. It's kind of boring after <laughs> after the novelty wears off. Uh, but yeah, like everything that is faster, because I'm too lazy to move my hand uh, 20 centimeters, which is what? five inches <laughs> to, to the right uh, to grab the mouse so everything else that I can do with the command line yeah F12 for the quake to come out come down and uh, do it that way yeah like for, for me like the the command line is not uh, something I use on a regular basis maybe years ago when you kind of had to um, but I think like uh, Linux GUIs have matured so much and, and become so good that I, I feel like I don't really need to and plus, I'm just lazy. Like, I mean, like, um, yeah, so, like, I, I wouldn't, like, obviously, like you were mentioning, like, command line web browsers and all that kind of thing. But, like, you know, that's a novelty for me. That's something I try out just to see how it works. Like, I wouldn't actually, like, actually use anything uh, on the command line, really. Like, maybe, like, like PPAs or something like that. I just copy paste some. Ter terminal command off off the internet and use that, but I wouldn't actually like do it myself or come up with the commands myself. So if you have to update the system, what do you do? Do you like open Synaptic or the App Store? I just use the Ubuntu updater thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but isn't it just easier to? There, there's a thing in the corner that says, "Ooh, you've updates. Click on this. It's like okay. magic." Okay, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, like computers are supposed to make our lives easier. <laughs> yeah, but hold on. By the way, I sometimes use Arch and Manjaro. And uh, <laughs> yeah, by the way, we know. And, uh, when, uh, whenever the update on the top right in GNOME says like you've got one update, I do yay because that's how cool and hipster yay. I am. Uh, and it shows that there's more than one. So the updater, or I don't know about Ubuntu, but I think on, on other systems, the, the updater actually always lags after uh, what you can get if you just uh, do the one command. And also it's like so burnt into my manual memory that I just do that anyway. But uh, I find it just easier and faster and less annoying and consistent as well. I, I would have to echo that point. I, for, for the vast majority of the time, I'm actually a UI user. I do pretty much everything in the UI because that's just how I'm used to. But it's just when doing updates, it just for whatever system I'm on, whether it's uh, like app get updates or whatever, if I'm on an Ubuntu or Debian based distro, or if I'm on a, an Arch based distro, it's Yay, which is 
freaking fantastic. Uh, uh, just typing yay into a command and into a terminal and like magic things just happen. It's it's absolutely fucking fantastic. But anyway, um, but yeah, it's just more reliable just doing it from the from the command line. I find just doing do, up, updates, and I found that I'm doing the the yay dash s command and just installing things from from the command line. Mm, I I found I found uh, yeah I, I agree like uh, but I found like I was a, a Linux Mint user for for quite a while and oh shut up <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for, like, for all you naysayers I'll say that like their Linux Mint and actually Zorn OS are actually fantastic for their use case <laughs> I'll, I'll, like full hearts to them but like Linux Mint was confusing at one point because you have like you had like the, their software updater. And then you had Synaptic as well, which I used more often because it was just more useful to me. Um, and then you also could have the command line. You could just do your apt get. So I found myself using just the command line to update my system because I, I don't know. It just, it just seemed cleaner. It just seemed like it was like the, the updater didn't really do a good job. Sometimes it would like fail and say it couldn't fetch packages and whatever. And, but then I do it on the command line. It's fine. And, uh, but Synaptic was great when you needed to find a very specific package. Like, so if you needed, like, for instance, I had, I needed like, uh, uh, drivers for my dra- graphics card and I had to find uh, like a very specific package. So Synaptic was great for that. Very specific set of skills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I grant you that. Like, if I want to look for something, uh, looking through Pac-Man and Yay is not as easy. I mean, it would probably be easy if I look it up. Actually, stop being lazy and just uh, do the research on how to search for things in uh, in a, in a uh, packaging manager. But uh, like the GUI one is easy because you can. Uh, I think we are hitting here something. It's easier to uh, replicate an action once you learned it. It's easier on the command line. But if you need to do something that you don't, you're not too sure about. The GUI is obviously more easier to use because you have got all the options in front of you. As long as the GUI is good, and Synaptic's GUI actually is probably one, it's, even if it's fucking ugly. But <laughs> it's uh, uh, sorry for, to all the developers that I've just offended for life. But uh, <laughs> it's 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 so well laid out it's, that it's, you. It's legacy. I'll say it's legacy. Yeah, but it's a good legacy. Yeah. yeah no, no, it it's is. It's like, reliable. It's not like Windows XP legacy. It's uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> What? Uh, GDK2 wasn't best. That's where I started. <laughs> GDK2, yeah? Anyway. Ubuntu 10.10 for the win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Obscure reference. Yeah, you, you lost me anyway, you know. This is this is the professional way that usually doesn't come out in the podcast because uh you edit out how it is and it's Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just just to give you guys a little bit of saved, background. Saved this, in the edit. this is how it works when we actually record. Like the, the episode is somewhere between forty five minutes to an hour. And yeah, we talk for about an hour and a half to two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. so so yeah, so now we talked about something. We we stopped to do a little bit fourth what do you call it when you break down the fourth wall and then we can back to the can we come back to the topic so uh <laughs> the uh, yeah this is a, right but yeah it, no just it just this is our very first live performance of the podcast and i i know it's not a big crowd but it's still a crowd and it's uh and it's not that many of you so but. so yeah we're, we we kind of just thought we'd just come along and just start talking and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i've been reliably informed because it's my first time to imagine you all naked for it because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that I'm not doing that um, uh, yeah okay so, so now if uh, everybody yeah. wants to run away please uh, do it so do so safely uh well, were we talking about Synaptic, right? Uh, yes, <laughs> you were. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's a it's a very good GUI because it's uh, because it's fine like finally laid out, and you have all the options in front of you. So if you want to do something you don't know, uh, and you're not exactly sure what you are doing or what you're looking for, it's there. So that's where for me the command line is sometimes less useful than the GUI. Yes. I, would, I would I would have to agree. Um, it's 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 free. Everyone's use case. I mean, obviously the command line. If you're if you're remote, if you're SSHing into a uh, like headless server or something like that, needless to say, you your command line foo has to be excellent because that's all you have. Um, but if you're putting this down in front of your granny or whatever, 
um, and they have no idea what computers are. It's like, I just want to click on Chrome and or Firefox or whatever browser of choice and log into my emails. Then that's what their use case is. So it's par for course. Yeah, for, yeah, like you were saying, click on Chrome. It's like, like when I'm showing kind of the elder members of my family, like how to use computers and stuff, it's not really Chrome or or Firefox. It's just the thing that shows me the internet. Like it's, <laughs> I'm I'm clicking on the Google and nothing is happening. <laughs> I don't know the one with the rainbow colors. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. No. Sorry. Uh, but you both have. Uh, Mike wants customer- to say something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm really <laughs> aching to say something. I. Uh, you both are have customer support, or not customer. Yeah. Like um, support experience, right? In uh, in the tech industry. I work in customer support. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, so don't you? Hello, f- my name is Connor, and I work in customer support. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't you? Don't you find that uh, telling somebody to put a command in the command line is easier than trying to explain to them. Now click at the top right corner, and oh, then fuck no, no, oh, no, no, not by no, long not at all, no, 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 God, no, no, no. Jesus, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's, that's a that's can a of worms. Of, okay, well now. That's not what I expected. I actually thought God, it would be Have you worked at customer support? <laughs> have you, oh, like, that's what I'm you asking. tell them to click, <laughs> you tell them to click on an icon, you will describe the icon in great detail, its location on the screen, its colors, its, its yeah. fucking like. Oh, that's, that's way easier. Its latitude and longitude, like, <laughs> and they'll still <laughs> click the wrong fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, uh, there's, co- but it has been a couple of times, um, in Windows support where I've, I've told them to bring up the command line and it's the whole thing of, no, um, Open up the the run prompt. Type in CMD. You know you're going to see a, a screen with a black background. No, but don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're not hacking your computer. <laughs> but I would have expected that telling people press A, press B, press C, press space, press dash, it would be easier for them to understand than than in theory. In yeah. theory, in I, practice, I see your logic. In practice, <laughs> in practice, no, not at all. Yeah, in theory, like if you could, like, say, for instance, like I don't know, do a, a like a paste bin thing, and just give them the command and just say, "Here's the paste bin link," just just paste that in. They probably still fuck it up. Right? <laughs> right okay. So it's not a problem with the command; it's the users, as always. Huh? Yes, it's always yeah. user error, hundred yeah. percent of the time. <laughs> um, I mean, there there's been cases where uh, I I know a friend who um, was running Linux on his laptop, and he was in a in a coffee shop, and he just because I think he was using a tiling window manager, it just happened to be his terminal was full screen, and he was doing his updates, and of course the updates were scrolling. Apparently, um, a manager of the of the coffee shop came over to him because he was quote unquote hacking. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh wow, that's like something from Mister Robot. Like that's so cool. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like I was, yeah, I had a similar story actually. I was on the command line and I was, uh, I think I, I can't remember what I was doing. I think I was just like, I was generating a Let's Encrypt cert, um, which is super easy. Like it's not actually that hard because you have the helper script and all that. So I was, I was just like typing some very small commands. I don't know if I'm talking into this properly. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I was just doing this and all this really cool looking stuff would fly by on the screen. And my mate was looking over my shoulder and he goes, he goes, what are you doing there? That looks like, that looks really complicated and everything. <laughs> it's like, it isn't really. <laughs> it's just like, it's just the command line output. Like it's, it's not anything impressive. I'm not making this happen like in real time. So I think that's that's how people see you're, the command. You're like, showing off your elite hacking skills. That's yeah, what you're doing. elite hacking skills. My God, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting at. You know, it's so easy. It's it's imagine that you would have to. I remember having to generate a SSL certificate before Let's Encrypt through a website. I think like Start SSL or something, where you well part of the complicacy was that uh, they wanted a lot of data up front, but then the GUI to actually get anywhere with it or it, the GUI to manage a website that you don't have an SSH access to. I, I find it extremely difficult to 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 follow like a cPanel or that kind of environment. Whereas in SSH, it's the same commands that you can use on your laptop, that you can use even on your phone if you are that inclined, and it's is the same is the same environment. So for me, to manage that is much easier than to manage it through a website. Yeah. 
I'm glad you agree. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, no one has anything clever to say. <laughs> no, I just agree. Like. <laughs> but it's well, it is depending on your use case. I mean, for me, because as I'm the token GUI user here, apparently, um, <laughs> that the the uh, the uh, C panel is uh, was or uh, any U- UI tool is actually more intuitive to me. That's just that's what I'm used to. But of course, because um, sure, if there was a really well written guide in front of me I would be able to follow the command line tool but it's not intuitive to me uh, the guide is called ArchWiki <laughs> <laughs> I By was uh, I was like uh, like the thing for me is that like back when I first discovered Linux I was I was really into it and really enthusiastic about it and like holy crap like there's something else apart from Windows like and I was like this is back in like the early noughties and stuff so I was like I was all in and I was like noughties. I was like I want to have like I want to have like I want to do everything on the command line and be elite and like be an like be peak Linux and stuff and like uh, and <laughs> what, what but, changed man what changed what changed what changed is that like a couple of years Years ago, like two to three years ago, I finally just like got rid of my Windows partition and and I just started using Linux full time on everything. Um, and and I found that I just didn't need to use the command line. So that 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 was kind of the turning point for me. It was it wasn't that like I just transitioned from someone who's super enthusiastic about it to just this is what's on my computer and I don't really care. Like it's uh, like I. I yeah, you're yeah you're well um uh, you no know, I I completely get where you're coming from. I mean um it it is it's not not only is it something that you want to experiment with as in you're an enthusiast you want to hack it in in quote unquote, but also it's the thing that's running day to day on your computer. You just also want it to just work because sometimes you're coming home from work and you just want to click on. Uh, your web browser to bring up YouTube. Yeah, you just like you. Oh, yeah, whatever. exactly. Like you, you, you kind of want the path of least resistance. Like uh, when you're on your own computer. So, like, just quick show of hands. Who here? Um, I'm not going to say never because you probably don't never use it. But that was really great grammar. But like, uh, <laughs> but uh, who here very rarely uses the command line and has Linux? Like, wow. Okay. That's surprising. So, um, for the audio <laughs> audio point of view, that's probably about five or six people. I counted <laughs> seven, but it's all right. Um, out, yes, out seven out of what? Uh, many, many tens of people. That's I'm. I, I don't know why, but I'm genuinely surprised. There, there's so many people here. Believe me, believe me. <laughs> so many people. You did Look, have to do that, did you? <laughs> man. The Trump and impre- oh my god, he w- <laughs> okay. He was, he was in Ireland a few days ago. I've had enough. And the the the, the, bl- the blimp was over here, so there were balls over, was at, over was, here. Was it at, was over in Ireland. Too. I was I'm already the, in Ireland. I was at the rally. I saw it. Um, it, was, it was brilliant. But uh, yeah, so uh, but yeah, that's that's my point. Is that like, I just I use Linux so so often that I, I don't feel compelled to kind of go down the rabbit hole as much these days because it's just the operating system that I use anyway. So it's not it's not a big deal to me anymore. It's just part of my life. Uh, my situation is reversed. So as Connor said, this depends on the use case, right? So mm. uh, I got a job where I'm allowed to use Linux at work f- two years ago or something. And since then, my command line usage actually skyro- skyrocketed. And I'm not using... I'm not a sysadmin or a developer. I... Uh, where I normally would be using spreadsheets before, I now use something like Visidata because the amount of, uh, I work with CSV files and the amount of, uh, lines in there, the, the, the whole size of the, the file is so massive that LibreOffice or even Excel basically just stutters to grind in some of them. Whereas, uh, command line tools like Visidata or like the old classics like Awk and Set, uh, they just, uh, uh, they just grind through it in seconds and, uh, you know, I can, I can filter, I can aggregate, I can redo reports and stuff like that. Now, having said that, my use is carrocated, but I'm still fairly, you know, uh, basic. I, I threw in awk and set like I'm some kind of a ninja, but, uh, <laughs> this is basically just, uh, yeah, stack overflow. Uh, stack overflow. <laughs> <laughs> stack overflow is, uh, I mean, that website should be just, uh, bathed in gold or something because, uh, it enables me to do my job. It got me through college. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, but yeah. 
Um, I think, have we beaten this topic to, like, beaten the dead horse a bit too much? Uh, yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> have we exhausted the, the topic or the audience? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what was the backup topic we came up with? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so what have you guys been up to? <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely can't remember the backup topic. That we came well, up that we and we can get to it. Like, what have we been up to? I think, uh, <laughs> we should have done it. Basically, we normally do this at the beginning of the show. You know, he asked what we've been up to, and we obediently said what we've been, we've been up to. We skipped it this time, but since you mentioned it, yeah, you've been up to something, obviously. <laughs> I'm always up to something. Um, <laughs> no, what it was up to recently was um, f- first time in a long time I actually um, switched over to GNOME full time on my laptop. I still have um, Cinnamon on my desktop, but um, for the for laptop use case, it actually makes sense to me. Um, the whole thing of, um, because immediately when I'm on a desktop, it's like keyboard and mouse. So the, the cinnamon desktop just makes sense to me because I'm, I'm used to the, the Windows esque paradigm of, you know, toolbar at the bottom and menu and everything like that. So that's what makes sense to me when I'm sitting down at, at my, um, at my desktop computer. But when I'm on my laptop, the whole keyboard centric, um, aspect of the, uh, the gnome shell, um, just, it, it's starting to make sense to me. And, Particularly with the very latest versions, what is it, three uh, dot three two or something like that, okay. is um, it just I'm at, uh, quite enamoured by it, uh, which which actually surprised me because I thought it would just be uh, a short term thing, and so it, the whole so yay no shell. Yeah, I, I've I've got I've gone uh, I've gone full Ubuntu. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, never. I never thought I'd hear myself say that because, like, obviously Ubuntu was the gateway drug for me many, many years ago. And, um, but, but yeah, I've, I've actually put, what is it? Eight? No, I have 1810 on the laptop and then 1904 on the desktop. I can't remember now. It's probably the other way I, around. I, I don't can't know. help you here. No, but, sure. um, um, cause I said it to you, you don't remember anything I say, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, it's but yeah, tough. like, it, like I was like, I know we, we, we had a bit of a love in for, uh, Ubuntu on the podcast a couple of episodes ago, but, um, with good reason, in my opinion. No, very, quite good reason. Like, yeah. It's uh, like, I'm, I'm very, very like, I'm, I'm, I'm back in love with Ubuntu now in the last few months. Like it's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to ask me what I've been up to? What have you been up to, Mike? <laughs> Speak uh, quickly. <laughs> I, I've been playing with the um, uh, build for with the Debian uh, Mate build for the Pine sixty four. Uh, powered for the Pinebook Pro, actually, on the Pine64. And, uh, yeah, it's the first time I can actually run, uh, full. I managed to run, like, Amazon video on a, uh, on an SBC. Mm. So I think. That's that's going well. I couldn't get any of the proper Linux games like Xonotic and Open Arena working on it, even though they downloaded and supposedly installed. But I'd imagine that's just the uh, kind of that's going to improve as they develop it. So, um, point of clarification: was this on? Um, so, was this a Prime Book Pro build on a Rock sixty four or on a Ray- Rock Pro sixty four? So, oh yeah, yeah. So it's the same. Those who, it's for it's most people who don't know what we are talking about, these are single board computers that are going to end up in the Pine Book Pro. And, uh, there's the same board that's going to be in the Pinebook Pro. So it's yeah. going to run, it's, it's running the same distribution, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, getting there and it's running the Mate desktop. I'm genuinely worried that we're going to be labeled as, uh, Pine64 shells. Well, I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have, I already have the Pinebook and I use it as the, as like for most of my, uh, home computing things. So yeah. Yeah. We're kind of all in. Um, but yeah, um, now that there's a there's a lull, I probably should have done this at the start, but I just wanted to say thanks to uh, Joe and all the guys for inviting us out here. It's pretty cool. Um, it's like <laughs> I should have done that at the start oh, or at the, the end, way. but whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna edit this. <laughs> <laughs> Editing, what does this mean? <laughs> it's li- li- live and dangerous, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 bloody it's really cool to be here like and it's it's cool to be doing this up on a stage like in front of people and uh yeah so i just want to give some love fuck it we're doing it live <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um yeah uh 
We had a backup topic, and we I can't do, yeah. bloody yeah. remember it now. And what are you missing in Linux? What are you miss? Yes. Yes, because I remember I thought I remember thinking at the time when you mentioned that because like in the preparation for for this show we were we were kind of saying like oh my god what are we going to talk about oh my god we're going to get up there it's going to be a disaster and <laughs> and by preparation for a show he means like five minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> but like we we came up, we we came up with two topics we said we would talk about the command line and then we would talk about something else just in case we ran out of steam and we ran out of steam way earlier than I thought we would <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, so yeah. What are we missing in it? That's actually a great one because I remember thinking at the time we should have done that as the first thing. <laughs> yeah, because you never said, you know. <laughs> and uh, I'm keeping an eye on the time. It's okay. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, what are we missing in it? That's a great one, actually. What What do you think? You go ahead. You go first. Well, uh, first, whenever we start recording podcasts, when we say uh, we start at ten, we start at ten and start recording at eleven because the audio <laughs> never works. <laughs> So, I, well, the audio never works properly, or, and, and, slash, or, uh, the video, uh, software, because we can't record without seeing each other remotely over video. We, you know, these kind of things never work properly up until like an hour of tinkering into the whole process. So, uh, that's the one thing. If we could have like appliance based or appliance style, uh, audio for, so you basically just press a button. And everything will be set up every day, every time you try it, working even after updates, and you just don't have to think about it, basically. So I don't know how far this goes, you know, st audio stack uh, and uh, video communication. Yeah, I I actually agree. I, I think that's a big thing for me is um, is is the audio side of Linux is uh, is a bit confusing to me. So <laughs> I'd love to see something that simplifies that a tad. That said, going back to Ubuntu, um, I've found it a little bit easier in, in, in the latest Ubuntu. Now, I do have some weird issues where, like, I'll be playing a YouTube video on Firefox and there'll just be no sound for some reason. And then I'll have something else that is putting out sound. And I have no idea why. <laughs> I, is this the, I think in the last version of Firefox, they actually disabled autoplay on. Uh, or are you after? Is it after you press the play button? Uh, yeah, no. Just generally, when I'm playing a video in in Firefox, like I have to, I I, I can't remember. Like I just click things until it's I hear noise. <laughs> like, and then, and then, but like that's Frantic. my troubleshooting process Frantic in general. Uh, just click things until it does what I want. Yeah, I think <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> we have one convert already. <laughs> this this is this is my gripe with it, right? So I don't understand audio at all. For me. If I could just click the sound button and there would be not, I don't need to know my inputs and outputs. I like kind of, or just list them in a way that I can understand and let me select the one and the application that it works with. Somehow in a, in a understand, for, for, a, for a person who knows nothing about audio to understand how to set up your inputs and outputs so that the microphone that you actually want to use, not the microphone on your camera or the microphone on something else, on your fridge or whatever, is, is talking to the, is talking to your, uh, is talking to your audio stack and uh, the output so that it comes out your headphones, not out of your TV. So, uh, <laughs> uh, right. So that kind of thing is extremely complicated on Linux, at least as far as I can see. I didn't find, and you know, you know, if even if I use power control or anything, it just doesn't show it to me in a simple way enough so that my feeble brain can understand it. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Like, I, it's uh, it's all it's like the elephant graveyard. I just don't go there. Like, it's. it's, it's um, <laughs> what about you, Connor? What's missing from Linux? Um. For the, for the most part, I'm able to do pretty much everything that I want to do. I mean, if, um, I'm, I'm not saying I'm an avid gamer, but, um, the Linux gaming community is, is certainly growing, uh, of late. Um, um, the, the actual re most recent thing that was, it was great for me that actually s I, I solved was my, remember was my audio interface was my previous one had a, a, a Windows driver and I had to rig and boot into Windows in order to get it to work. But thankfully I solved that way just switching the hardware. But, um, uh, <laughs> it's, it's always an, an elegant solution. <laughs> uh, but no, genuinely, um, I don't think there's anything that I, I, I'm missing at the moment. I'm, I'm sure there's, there's things that can be improved because there's always things can, that can be improved, but nothing springs to mind. Yeah. I, I'm kind of the same. I mean, when, when I started, when I set out 
using Linux and I kind of got into it and learned how it worked and, you know, got into all the, all the community and everything. I, I sort of like, I sort of accepted that some things were going to be missing and it wasn't going to be as seamless and as an, an experience as using Windows or, or Mac or something like that's proprietary and commercial and blah, blah, blah. Um, so negative in the freedom dimension, negative in the freedom dimension. And, and, uh, yeah, so, so I don't know. Whatever's missing for me, I, I kind of just accept it and move on because it's, you know, I think that ultimately I'm using Linux. So that's what I want to be doing because I just think it's a better way to use my computer. So, you know, if there is anything missing, and I'm sure there is, and I'm sure I could think of something, but like the thing for me is that I don't really care because it's like, I, I'm accepting some of the rough edges, you know, uh, you know, to, to be using an operating <coughs> system that I think is, is better and aligns with my ideas and my values and blah, 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 all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, there's like audio is definitely a, a real bugbear, especially since we started doing the podcast, like, cause <laughs> we always have this, we, <laughs> we have this thing when we record the podcast, which is usually either on a Friday night or a Saturday morning. We we always say, like, if it's on a Saturday, it's like 11 a.m., so it doesn't clog up our day and we can still do other stuff. So Also, who wants to get up early on a Saturday? Yeah. So 11 a.m. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like 11 a.m. on a Saturday, but usually we start more like quarter to 12 because <laughs> because there's, like, audio issues all over the place. It's like, hang on, lads, I have to hang up. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. I can't see you. Audacity's not working for some bloody reason. Um, Like... <laughs> Like it's, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare, but like we've kind of gotten to a point where we just accept it and we're just like, yeah, let's just, let's just say a half hour earlier for the sake of it, just to account for all those issues. Like, well, well I'm not sure if I accept it. I just can't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but I'm not angry about it either. I'm just kind of so, like, oh, it's not working. This is my life now, you know? <laughs> you know like, um, just as, as you were talking there, I just um, would like to echo a couple of those points. Uh, but it it caused me to to think of maybe the reason why I'm struggling to think of things is of just adopt uh, adapted is the whole thing of sure I'm thinking okay this tool I can't use but there's this other tool so I'm using this other tool now and this other tool is suiting my needs and then this other, so I made a certain amount of choices so probably at the time when I was making that choice I was saying I would have gone, gone off on a big massive rant and said oh yeah the the thing that's missing for in in this sense is X tool but then a week or two later, realize, oh, there's Y tool, which is a uh, Linux alternative that does pretty much the same thing. So probably the reason why I can't think of it is I've, I've just made all of those decisions along the way. And I've just, for the moment, I'm like, oh, why do I need to do, use X tool? Because Y tool does pretty much the same thing. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 you, there's always an alternative, really. Like, the, like you'd be hard pressed not to find an, an alternative when it comes to like Linux and the open source software and et cetera. Like, if, if if you find something and it's it's not up to scratch, like you're more than likely gonna find something somewhere that does what you want want it to do. Like um, it, there's a lot of choice. There is a lot of choice, but there's a lot of people. If you have to work with somebody who expects things from the say Windows kind of point of uh, experience, uh, you can do most of things that say Excel can do, you can do in LibreOffice Calc, but if they expect you to provide them with like a pivot table with a special slider at the top, you can't because that's, that's the Microsoft way of doing things and uh, LibreOffice doesn't have that particular functionality and even if it did, it would probably not transfer very well through the conversion mm -hmm. to the program. So that's the one thing where other people expect you to use a certain format or to expect you to give them the information in a certain way that is suitable for their operating system but not for yours um we're into the last 10 minutes now i think we're finishing up at seven is that right joe uh, yeah okay seven so i thought like because w w like i don't know this is off script a little bit i hope you guys don't mind <laughs> um go for it uh because because we, <laughs> yeah, yeah why, exactly, I know, right? <laughs> um, uh, because like we kind of do this, like we're locked away in our bedrooms in Dublin when we're when we're like. Where, where, what? <laughs> Why is that, that funny? That, that sounded incredibly <laughs> I think it's funny in regards to what you are going to say. But. Uh, no, no, we're always like locked away. Like we don't get much interaction with the community because the community isn't quite as large in Ireland for obvious reasons because, you know, less people there. And uh, like, 
like so so i don't know i'd like to maybe like see if anyone has any like questions or they want to say anything or ask us tell us we're shite or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know does anyone want to say anything to us or ask us a question it's okay if you don't we'll just move on I, i'd like to say the latter that we are shite yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's one vote in that direction we've got one yes wait for the mic So, um, just a point to uh, rewind all the way back to the beginning. Uh, right on. With yay, you can search for tools quite interestingly with yay minus s and like two words. So, like editor thing. So, you can do two word searches quite deeply. It's very useful. Good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Any other Love questions? it. Love it. Thanks. Just to, just to follow up on your point about incompatibility between Word and LibreOffice, have you got a solution to that problem? Well, no. I just tell the people that uh, yeah. I give you the CSV and you put it in the format you want. Right. Because I, 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 unfortunately, <laughs> I also have found that tables and scientific things don't transfer very well. So I end up using Word Online, unfortunately, to, to do that job. I... Um, yeah. I would I would say there's there is word online which you have said I've I've heard uh, in terms of um office compatibility the W2PS office is supposed to be good um I I'm, it's not free and open source but uh, I've heard it's it, it does have Linux binaries and it has reportedly very good Microsoft I've uh, I've tried it it's not great um, <laughs> it's, uh, I, ref- just I refuse to buy head. Office three six five so yeah. Oh, we've got one over there. I wonder if this will be about Marte at all. <laughs> <laughs> I never did like Joe Ressington. <laughs> this is a, a hot tip for Mike. You can complete your journey to Command Line Ninja. There is a, a Command Line browser called Browsh. It's B-R-O-W dot S-H. And it's actually very, very good. Is that the one when you have to have uh, Firefox installed and it will show you, it right. will render the... Yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, good. it's very clever the way it renders the graphics uh, to and CR. Yeah. yeah, yeah. thanks. I'll give it a try. Well, I- I've got a question. When you asked um, who uh, only uses the GUI and doesn't use the command line, fucking Will put his hand up. And I'm not having it. Will, please explain. <laughs> <laughs> It's my job to stop you having to use the command line. But why? <laughs> why what? Why would you want people to stop using the command line? Uh, because it's clunky, it's complicated, it's confusing, and it's shrouded in mystery. It, you shouldn't um, have to. Yeah. My, my point is that if, if the Ubuntu desktop team are doing their job correctly, then you should never need to open a command line. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah I would, I would, I'd like to echo Will, Will's point. It's the whole thing of, <laughs> it's, it's the, the lowest barrier to entry. I mean, if you're putting, if you're put, put, um, f- to use the generic granny, it, to, um, example again, if you were to put a computer down in front of your granny and all it was doing was showing the command line, then that's not very intuitive. So, that fails on the point that most of your Ubuntu users, as far as I imagine, are not grannies. And uh, I, 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 that's that's the thing. You see, you might be a very visual person. I'm, I'm a very textual person. So for me, the command line, if it wasn't there, I probably wouldn't use it. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to... S- <laughs> I'm not trying to stop anybody using the command line. What I'm trying to do is make sure that there are alternatives so that you don't have to if you don't want to. Here, um, here. I use Linux all day, every day. I use Ubuntu all day, every day. I don't do uh, software development you know, most of the time. Um, and so what I do do, I can do without dropping to the command line. And um, I'm quite happy with it like that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like, do, do we want... Do we want to all show how good we are at things, or do we want to just like put some shit on our computer that makes us do computer stuff? Like, like that's what Linux is for me. Like, it's a, it's just the thing that's on my computer that allows me to use the computer. Like, I don't really care about how it works anymore. Like I used to, but nowadays it's just my daily thing. It's just my daily OS. I I don't really give a shit about how it works anymore. I don't want to use the command line because I want to just make. It, I want it to be easy. But this from 
That's what I was trying to express, that mm. the command line allows me to work easily on the fact that I'm not related to Linux at all. You know, or, uh, I the, the command line for me is something that uh, em- enables me to work fast and easily. Mm. If it wasn't there, like the amount of, click, of clicks I would have to make to to filter something mm. in Excel or in anything, something like that, it's just, it's just uh, for me, the command line is much easier to use. That's what I'm trying to... You don't get to. Mm. I think we're we're like three minutes from time now. Uh, um, does, any, does, any... does Stuart have a follow up? I got a question. I'm sure he does. <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, you had all these terrible problems with audio. Did you go and buy a computer with Ubuntu on it, or no. did you install it yourself? I installed it myself. If you buy a computer with Ubuntu on it, it works. Interesting. <laughs> uh, um, also. Do you switch distros a lot? You've seen, from what you've been saying so far, if you switch distros a lot, I can imagine how from one week to the next, things might fuck up. That's good to know, actually. No, that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hang on, hang on. Even Says on the, the man who, last night, when we recorded user error, oh, I fixed this, I fixed it now, I fixed it now, I fixed that error where it, got, it talks like this. Connects to Mumble. <laughs> Hello, traps. <laughs> <laughs> no, he <it>, did... <laughs> <laughs> he filed a bug. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, what are we, we have two minutes left. Should, should we wrap it up? What do you think? Yeah, you tell I? me. <laughs> okay. Do okay. W- one last question. If anybody has it, otherwise we'll we'll mm-hmm. okay. There's one in the back there. It's it's not particularly a question, but um, one thing that I, I I miss from Windows is obviously Windows Updater. Whenever you go really? home, sorry, what? really. <laughs> And, uh, Probably the worst thing you could have picked from Windows. And, um, so sorry, you, 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 that's, that's a kind of sex thing? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you know, you go home, you turn on your computer, wait half an hour for it to, to, to turn on. It is ideal because then yeah, you, you that. know, you can hoover your house, you can go and wash your dishes. How much time do you waste when you just go home and just turn on the computer and do what you need to do? You know, if you've got some time to, to you know, do what you actually have to do, you know, maybe you might get around to it. So it gives you some enforced downtime, is what you're saying. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a health thing, right? Not not only do you get to do that at home, but if you use Windows at work, you get to like have that as work time. Yeah, that is have... a good thing. Yeah, so you, I you agree just with turn that. Up, yeah, make a cup of tea, check oh, out for yeah. half an hour, go at the pub. Kind yeah, of. when I, 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 I have Windows, is, you got a blue screen. Like, just call IT. I, I, I worked in a place they were reflashing all our computers from like uh, Windows Seven to Windows Ten, and yeah, that was fucking brilliant. Like, we just got an hour <laughs> off work. Like. Well, oh, yeah, what, the ways on, on the, uh, I would like to share an anecdote just in relation to that. There was actually quite something quite recently, and it was a work a work computer, and it was whatever month update that Windows 10 was having, and it literally um, made my computer completely and utterly unuse, unusable for about 20 minutes because it was doing whatever friggin' update it was doing, and then rebooting like 500 million times. <laughs> Yeah, in a work situation, that's that's fine. Like, it's, it's their time, not mine. <laughs> Next time in Windows Lights. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So it's it's seven bells anyway. So I think I think that's our cue to to get the fuck off the stage and. Um, Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank me for being here and all that shit. Thank you. Um, thank you. 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 So thanks. Thanks to the audience. You've been a great audience, and thanks to you for the questions. Thank you for pity laughing and thank. Thank you to the venue. It's been a great venue. Great food, and thank you for Joe for organizing this. Yeah. Thanks to Joe. Thanks to all you guys. You've been wonderful, and thanks to Harrison for a crack in fish and chips.